All right, here we go. We're going to go over the squeeze theorem. I like to call it the squeeze theorem because I'm funky like that. Anyway, um, the squeeze theorem essentially is something that can be used to prove each of these theorems here. I am not in this video or in any video in this course going to go over the proof um, of either of these using the squeeze theorem, but it's one of those things where if you carry along with me long enough and we get into calculus two together, I'll be using the squeeze theorem there. But the squeeze theorem is used to show that this, the limit as x goes to zero of sine x over x, is equal to one. And I've drawn the graph of sine of x over x. And you see that as we approach from the left-hand side and from the right-hand side of sine of x over x, as we approach x equals zero, we approach a y value of one. So sine of x over x is one. Most math teachers are gonna have you using this fact. So it's gonna be asked, that you memorize that and use it. More on that later in this video of how we use it. Similarly, we can use the squeeze theorem to prove this. One minus cosine x over x. Well, the limit as x goes to zero of that, as we see here, it's going to approach zero. That's it, peeps. So we're gonna use those facts in the next couple of problems. So we're asked to find each limit using those squeeze theorem results. So I don't want you to be confused. We use the squeeze theorem to prove those two um, formulas, if you will. So the limit as x goes to zero of two minus two cosine three x all over three x. Oh my goodness. Well, this kind of seems like it's that one minus cosine x over x type of setup. It's close to it. So I'm gonna rewrite this so that we're close to that. So we get the limit as x goes to zero. I'm going to factor out a 2 from here, and I'm going to do that because it's going to leave me with 1 minus cosine of ooh, 3x all over 3x. Now, why does this matter? Well, that x term and x term might as well be theta values. You can think of them as thetas as well. It's the same thing. And so if we look at them as theta, then we've got cosine of theta and theta. So this part right here is that exact setup, and we know that the limit as theta goes to zero of this is going to be equal to zero. So all of that goes to zero. So you're essentially left with two times zero, which is equal to zero. So it's a little bit of manipulation to get you there. But again, the important part is realizing that you've got to have the same angle as this value is in the denominator. So if this was just x and that was 3x, it wouldn't necessarily equal to zero. You'd have to manipulate it to get it there. That's it. All right, this one right here, again, some more manipulation required. I look at that and I think, uh, what do we do? Well, one thing that we can do with this problem that we could have also done with this one here is plug in zero. When I plug in zero, I get the tangent squared of zero over zero squared, which is tangent of zero is zero, squared is zero, so I get zero over zero. It's indeterminate, but we're gonna use the squeeze theorem. How are we going to do that? Well, we have the limit as x goes to zero of tangent squared can be rewritten as sine x, over cosine x squared. And I'm gonna look at it like this, times one over x squared. Why would I do that? Well, it's so that I don't have a fraction over a fraction. That x squared is one over x squared. So I got the limit as x goes to zero, and we get sine squared x, ooh, all over x squared cosine x. And that's cosine squared x. Okay, okay. It's still going to be 0 over 0, but let's break it down further. Sine squared x is the same as sine x times sine x. I'm going to divide out these x's. Check out the manipulation, peeps. x times x gives me x squared, and then we're left with 1 over cosine squared x. Why did I do it that way again? So that we could see the sine x over x value that we got going on. Remember that sine x over x, when the limit is taken as we go to 0, is equal to 1. So each of these will go to one. So we'll get one times one from this rule times one over cosine of zero squared. This notation means the same as that, squaring all of cosine. And cosine of zero is one. So all of this is equal to one. That whole thing's equal to one. All right, now pay close attention to number three. It's one of those tricky kinds of problems that math teachers love to put on tests. This resembles this form. It's close, but not quite. In order for this 
to work with this property here. What we would need is a 7 down here. We would need this angle to line up with that denominator perfectly. So let's make it so. I can put a 7 down there, but I then have to multiply the numerator by 7 as well. If I don't do that, well, then I've just made up things. So now that I've done that, check it out. You essentially now have the limit as x goes to 0 of, I can either pull the 7 out of the limit or just kind of take it off to the side here. And notice that I have the sine of 7x all over 7x. Nice. This right here matches this perfectly. It's the sine of an angle over that same value. Sine of an angle over the same value. So this whole thing goes to 1, and then we're left with 7, which is equal to 7. That's awesome right there. Pure manipulation. How we would know to multiply by 7 is because we want it there to make sure the angles match up. Sorry, the angle and the denominator match up. That's it. Some fun problems. A little bit tricky. It's all about knowing your basic rules and then manipulating the problems to get there. We'll do some more of those in the exercise section. It'll be fun.